blessings in the love and light of the prime creative force, source supreme, most high, Mother God in her original wonder twin, Father God, and we are their children. Today I am going to share with you from Era of Peace, making peace with your sexuality. Check out the date, October 19th, 1999, by Patricia Diane Cotarobles, The New Age Study of Humanity's Purpose. Sexuality is a beautiful expression of love. It is an intimate, sacred communion between two people. When experienced with an open heart, it can transcend the limitation of physical reality and allow one to soar into the octaves of ecstasy, wonder, and awe. It can lift our hearts. It can nurture and heal us. It can fill our, our very beings with peace and contentment. And it can expand our capacity to love. Sexuality is a very important part of our earthly school of learning. But unfortunately, like so many other things, it has been misunderstood, distorted, and abused. Now, during the cosmic mom moment of beloved Mother Earth's rebirth, this aspect of our being, beings, must be healed, purified, and loved so that it too can ascend into the fifth dimensional octaves of perfection. We are now ascending into the light physically. That means the ascension of our, our four lower bodies as well as the ascension of the earth. For this to occur in divine order, every facet of our beings must be loved, free from the entrapment of our lower human egos. Dun, da, da, da. This includes our sexuality. We cannot just suppress it and deny that it exists. We need to lift our sexual experience up out of the chaos of abuse and depravity into the embrace of our God selves, where we will know the joy and elation of its original divine intent. It seems as though we have created the same confused attitude about sex that we created about money. Interestingly, sex and money are the two things that our lower human egos use most effectively to keep us stuck in negativity. For eons of time, the monetary system of the world has been abused instead of the natural exchange of give and take based on the principle of always working toward the highest good of all concerned. The wealth of the world has been used by the elite globalist, few by the globalists, there's a few of them, to manipulate dominate, oppress, and control the multitudes. Money has been such a source of pain and suffering throughout history that religious orders in both Eastern and Western cultures considered money itself to be innately evil. They thereby denounced it and actually took vows of poverty. This action gave the spiritual aspirants of the world the message that somehow poverty was a virtue. This belief system perpetuated the schism between the haves and the have-nots. It also created a phenomenon that intensified the abuse of money because the people who were truly seeking greater levels of truth to improve the quality of life on the planet and those who genuinely were striving towards spiritual growth and self-mastery were being taught by the world religions that money was evil and should not be acquired. That belief left the money in the hands of those who were not pursuing the highest good for all, but rather were pursuing the self-indulgent gratification of greed and power. If we observe what has transpired on the planet as a result of the abuse of our sexuality, we will witness the same thing. For eons of time, sex also has been used to manipulate, dominate, oppress, and control people. It has fallen to the depths of degradation. Degradation. As this condition developed, the religions of the world began to distance themselves from this physical experience. 
In order to encourage their followers to do the same, they initiated all kinds of taboos regarding sex. They took vows of celibacy and proclaimed chastity a virtue. This created quite a quandary. Each soul knew and understood that through the sacred communion of sex, one of the most miraculous events on earth occurs, which is the procreation of life. On the other hand, they were being told by religious leaders that sex was bad. These two diametrically opposed concepts could not be effectively reconciled in humanity's finite minds. So we learn to muddle through life, vacillating between wanting very much to fulfill our sexual experience and beating ourselves up with guilt and shame if we did. This was a coup de grace coup de grace for our human egos. Our confusion created a very powerful vehicle through which our human egos could manipulate us to keep us bound in self-abuse. Remember, remember, the human ego is an aspect of our personality that developed as we used our free will, and free will was a flop, folks, and our creative, creative faculties of thought and feeling to create thought forms and experiences on earth that were conflicting with God's will. As we well, as we well, as we fell into denser and denser frequencies of vibration, our connection with our God selves was short-circuited. Eventually, our human egos developed to the point that they were able to take control of our physical, etheric, mental, and emotional bodies. Dun, 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 dun. No bueno. The cabal. Then they began manipulating our four lower bodies for their own selfish intent. Like beta, sex kitten programming, and things like that. Then uh, the human ego obtained a sense of pleasure from physical sensations. So it focused its attention on physical gratification. Our sexuality is our most sensual experience. So this area of our lives became dominated by our human egos. Yes, watching pornography is harmful. I added that in. But I'm sure Patricia feels much the same way I do. Consequently, our egos prompted us to fulfill our sexual pleasures obsessively and often abusively. The human ego has no concept of integrity or moral conscience. So as we progress through our earthly sojourn, our sexuality deteriorated from the sacred communion it was intended to be into a compulsive addiction. People striving to attain self-mastery believe that the only way to break this bad habit was to stop having sex. But because sexuality is an important part of our learning experience on earth, the desire for it never went away. Forced celibacy usually resulted in different degrees of frustration, anxiety, and even sexual perversion. Sexual suppression was registered in our consciousness as self-deprivation, so we began negating our self-worth and abusing ourselves in other ways. The denial of sexual expression manifested as, highlighted, compulsive behavior patterns in other areas such as eating disorders, substance abuse, and self-loathing. It caused us to suppress our feeling nature and we numbed ourselves so we wouldn't be tempted. As we closed our heart centers down, we experienced loneliness, rejection, isolation, and many other grossly mutated forms of self Flag, flagellation, flagellation. The human ego, aggressively rebelling against the attempted suppression, 